So we need to plug another imaginary chord into the output of this effects bus. And we need to send it to the input on this auxiliary track. And we do that by coming to this input and we tell that that it's, this track is listening from that drum effects bus. And so now when we play this, oh, the other thing you need to do, you saw that um, this window come up earlier. It's just a fader. You turn it up to however high or however low you want. So now we have this up and we've got an input into this bus. And we simply assign it to stereo track. So we'll assign it a stereo reverb in this case, but it can be delay, it could be any effect. And now we will have some information coming into this track. And you can see it right there. And you can also hear it. And it's that simple. So you just need to come up here, and you could do that anywhere on any any track. Come up here to your send. You find where you want to send it. You turn up the volume on that send to the desired level. You set you can use you can use a plug-in if you're doing it for effects. You can set a reverb in here. You tell it where it's coming from. And that should match your send. This is called your return. So your return should match your send. And you're sending it into your track. And that's how you use buses. And, um, and these weren't always named this way. You find you can rename your buses by coming up here to setup. And this is all a matter of ins and outs. And then you come up here to the bus tab. Now originally, this one was called bus one and two. If you just open Pro Tools, that's what you're gonna see. And then this one was uh, was three and four, and so on and so forth all down the line. So I renamed them to what I wanted them to be. And you just double click on it, and then you just you just type in you just type in what you want it to be. And, that, and that'll show up over here. So for example, if this said bus, originally said bus one and two, then these are gonna say, I'll say bus one and two. So you, when we went in here, it was bus one and two. And then, but then when you rename them, It also changes the name, just like that. And then you can see, see if I can bring everything else back in. Bring some other stuff back in here. And then you can see I've used that in a variety. There's a um, acoustic reverb. There's acoustic delay, and those are all just buses. See, acoustic reverb was sent out of here and sent into the acoustic reverb channel in this case. And you can also do it with audio. Um, you can, in that case, you can choose. Um, you can you can do it the same way. So I can send audio from this track into this track. And there's all kinds of different things you can do with buses. But that's where your buses are. And this right here is your send. And just make sure that your send matches your return. 
And that's it. That's how you use buses. And um, trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, um, and from this window in your bus, you can also um, pan pan your bus. So I always I pan my effects the same way as um, as as the the dry audio is panned in the track. Um, and you can solo the track from here. You can you can uh, bypass the bus. And of course, once again, this is your fader. And uh, and that's about it. And you can also um, we'll get into this in another in the automation video, but you can also automate these too. And we'll get into that into another video. But that's how you use buses. And uh, that's it. I'm Joe Ricardo, DeepScopeRecords.com. You can email me, DeepScope at DeepScopeRecords.com. And uh, see you next time.